Our guest for the interview tonight is our friend Frank Rich from New York Magazine. Frank spent the week of the Republican convention this year immersed in conservative media to try to find out what people are really thinking and feeling and talking about right now on the right. And if you are not a hardcore conservative and you think from the outside of the conservative movement that Fox News must represent the way conservatives are talking to each other and what conservative politics are like right now and where conservatives are at in this election and how they feel about Mitt Romney. Frank's assessment is that you would be wrong. What Fox News represents right now is the Romney campaign, sometimes literally the Romney campaign. The campaign advisors, like those you see here, are on the payroll at Fox giving you analysis of the campaign that they work for, which is very, very tidy. But the tone of the conservative, more grassroots media big right-wing talk radio, for example, is not just not supportive of Mitt Romney, at times it is downright nasty. The issue that's troubling me is Ann Romney. I don't like the prominence that she is taking. She is enjoying herself a little too much. She thinks she's running for office. She is not doing him a service as far as I am concerned by playing such a prominent role. The country club woman... You know, I've been around women like that all my life. I don't like them, to be frank with you. If I don't like them, you could just imagine what poor people are feeling. You know, Miss Perfect. As someone who's grassroots, I really get um, ticked off whenever I talk about the battle between the establishment and grassroots, and I'm constantly told that it doesn't exist. I'm constantly told that, no, you're just being a drama queen. I'm told, oh, no, right. you're just making stuff up. This, this, you know, no, it's happy. And, and we're all getting along, and you need to stop talking about crap like this because we're supposed to have unity. I am told that every single week. That is a sample of what right-wing talk radio sounds like right now, which is not at all what Fox News sounds like right now. That was uh, Dana Lash and Michael Savage there. This is the sort of stuff that Frank Rich is writing about today at New York Magazine after his week-long embed in conservative media. His piece on this is called My Embed in Red. Frank Rich, it's great to see you here tonight. Thanks for being here. Great to see you, Rachel. Do you feel like those were fair samples to select in terms of talking about the difference in tone you're getting from those two different parts of the right? Completely fair. It was absolutely fascinating to me because the way I did it is I listened to all the radio all day. I watched Fox at night. I looked at every website, including some really good, highbrow, erudite, conservative uh, websites. And Fox, you, you nailed it when talking about these people have double employment. Fox really is an arm of the Romney campaign. What you find listening to the grassroots is a lot of suspicion about both Romney and the GOP establishment in general a fury about the rules changes that were pushed through about delegate selection, hardly covering the mainstream media mm -hmm. early in the convention. Um, we covered it, but the right media didn't the, cover it. Right. Fox didn't like to cover Fox it. Fox right. didn't cover it, but it, it was, and it was not just about Ron Paul people. It was across the board. And you find that um, there are a tremendous amount of complaints. For instance, if you listen to Fox, you'd think that the only people who were criticizing Clint Eastwood were lefties and Hollywood types and Democrats. In fact, uh, Glenn Beck did a, a really intentionally hilarious monologue making fun of Clint Eastwood and the idiocy of the Romney campaign to let their big night be stepped on by that 15-minute uh, improv. You also learn that there's a lot of skepticism about uh, Romney and Ryan's foreign policy. Um, indeed, a lot of what's happened in the past since the Republican convention was predicted by conservative commentators at places like the American Conservative while the convention was going on. You find a lot of enthusiasm for Ryan, hmm. for Paul Ryan, as the pure sort of avatar of uh, minimal government, uh, you know, the basically, you know, fundamental uh, conservative ideolo ideology, but fury about the fact that he dumbed down his message at the convention that if the left was complaining about him fudging or facts or lying in his big convention speech, um, the right's complaint was that Ryan was fudging conservative principles, not talking about the big ideas that they attribute to him and like. Um, the religious right was furious about the, the establishment's abandonment of Todd Akin. Mm -hmm. uh, people like Brian Fisher, who has a radio show of the American Family Association. Uh, and, and then people were fighting with Mike Huckabee, who took the same stand, sort of supporting Akin. And uh, so this is in, what you just played is completely typical uh, of what I was hearing. And by the way, I would say to your audience, it's worth listening to. Some of these people, you may completely disagree with them, but they're honest. 
they're not spinning for like a Karl Rove on Fox or a Frank Luntz on Fox. They have contempt for Frank Luntz, saying every day that every uh, focus group likes the Republican ad better than the Democratic ad. They know it's nonsense. They were concerned about uh, the bad ratings the convention was getting. But it's, it's, I learned more about the Republicans and harsher criticism of the Republicans from the, the conservative media than I would from a lot of the liberal press. So we, I feel like we saw this insurgency in Republican politics, right? When the Tea Party movement became a generator of right-wing primary challengers to establishment Republican candidates, the Republican Party essentially just shifted to incorporate the right-wing protest movement, which was happy to play electoral politics. And so you've got Jesse Benton, who was, you know, Rand Paul's campaign manager right. against uh, Mitch McConnell's hand-picked successor for that Senate seat right. uh, in hand -picked candidate for that Senate seat um, uh, in Kentucky, now Mitch McConnell is, is, is bringing Jesse Benton on board. They just brought all those folks right on board. But that seems to not be happening in the commentariat. And so aren't people like the folks at Fox News risking the situation in which they are seen as the establishment and they lose all of the energy on their own side in the same way that the National Republican Senate Committee and Mitch McConnell and all these guys had to bear the brunt of their own insurgent wing in electoral politics. I think you're right, but I think Fox, you're actually hitting the conundrum about Fox. In the end, it is not a Tea Party organization. It is the establishment yes. of the Republican Party. It is owned by Rupert Murdoch, more or less. And, and so therefore, when uh, it, the chips are down, they're going to go with Romney. I'm sure, you know, Murdoch himself has been somewhat contentious of Romney on Twitter, but that's where their economic interests are. They think, I think, the Tea Party people, the base, the grassroots, have nowhere to go. I think the grassroots people would say, we have some place to go, possibly someday a third party, which of course is quixotic. But I think if Romney loses, which increasingly seems likely to me, uh, and even if he wins, um, there's going to be a real night of the long knives as people fight this out because it is a, it's a it's really interesting story. Let me ask you just before we go about the Mitt Romney tape tonight. You saw us play it at the top oh, yes. of the hour. 47% uh, of the country who are with him, who are dependent on government, who believe that they are victims, who believe the government has a responsibility to care for them, who believe that they are entitled to health care, to food, to housing, you name it, that that's an entitlement and the government should give it to them and they will vote for this president no matter what. My job is not to worry about those people. I'll never convince them that they should take personal responsibility and care for their lives. Is Pre President Romney? <laughs> here, here, all I can think of is that polling question they always ask, who cares more about people like you? Yeah. <laughs> Can you wait for the next number uh, in that matchup with Obama? And I will just mention people are already voting. As of today, ballots have already been counted good, in North Carolina. Good timing. Yeah. Frank Rich, writer at large for New York Magazine. The article is called My Embed in Red, out in the latest magazine. Frank, uh, thanks for doing it. It was a lot of fun to read, and it's super insightful. Thanks for Thank being Thank you here. very much. Thanks. All right.